Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, oh, you are good, good. Oh, oh, you are good, good. Oh, oh, you are good, good. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name.
Good morning, Down River. Lots of things happening this morning, lots of activity going on, things happening here at Down River. And we are so glad you're here to enjoy all these things that are happening at Down River. We're so happy to have you here. We're also welcome, we would also like to welcome our uh, online congregation. Thank you for joining us today. There's a few things that I need to uh, go through today. The first thing is, how can you stay connected with Down River Church and be informed of all the things going on here? You can fill out a Connect card, drop it in the basket in the back so we can get your information. You can also fill out a Connect card online and that website is on your screen right now. On the back of the Connect card is a, 24, is a uh, prayer request. We invite anybody, everyone to fill out a prayer request, drop that in the basket and our prayer team will pray for Pray for the needs of you, pray for the needs of the church, our community, our country, and our world. Also, if you'd like to submit a 24-hour prayer request, you can do that online 24-7. Uh, uh, you can also call the office, and uh, Elaine would be happy to take your prayer request or the pastor, and the prayer team will pray for that. We are a very giving church. We give our, our time, our talents, uh, we get also give of our resources. If you'd like to make a donation to Down River Church, the website is online. Please, you can mail, or you can mail a check into the office. If you're here in the room, you can fill out an envelope and drop it in the basket back there, and you will help support the mission and ministries here at Down River. Uh, we'd, uh, we'd, love to, we'd love to hear uh, your ideas about what we could do different here at Down River Church. And I'd invite you to put some things on the Connect card if you have some thoughts about what you'd like to see, things that uh, maybe you'd be interested in, in uh, serving uh, here at Down River. So please uh, take a minute to do that. We also have, are having a Lenten Bible study, which, begins, which is happening Tuesdays through Lent at 1.30 p.m. And we are me they're meeting here at the church. Pastor John is leading that. Books are on the back table, they're $17. Just drop your, uh, put some money in an envelope and put it in the basket and we'll make sure that it gets uh, to the right place. Uh, I am also doing a small group on Wednesday nights every other week, beginning this Wednesday on Adam Hamilton's Why, and that's in your uh, bulletin that you received when you came in. So if you'd like to be part of that, just let me know so I can send you the email link. The 25th of February, Soul Food Extravaganza. Ooh, I see a lot of people have signed up to make some dishes for that uh, Sunday, and that's a week from today. So uh, please uh, plan to stay after service that day and enjoy some soul food. We'd be, uh, we'd be interested to see all the dishes that everyone's going to make. I can't wait to uh, sample some of that. So looking forward to that. So uh, also, uh, I was informed just before coming in that they are, we are collecting candy in the lobby to fill Easter eggs for an Easter egg hunt that I believe will be happening on uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, is that right, Lindsay? Okay, there'll be an Easter egg hunt on Palm Sunday. So if you uh, feel inclined to donate some candy to help us uh, to stuff eggs, please do that and drop that off in the lobby. There's a big basket out there for you to put that in. So with that, I'd invite Janine Walker up to lead us in our call to worship and our scripture. There she is. Please join me in this morning's call to worship. Listen to what the Lord our God says to us. Peace is God's hope for us. Salvation is God's gift to us. See what the Lord our God reveals to us. Righteousness is the path to the kingdom. Faithfulness is the highway we build. Tell what the Lord our God asks us to speak. Prepare God's way. Christ is coming to redeem us. Amen. This morning's first scripture reading is from Genesis 1. Verses 1 to 3, from the New Living Translation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. 
and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. This morning's second scripture reading is from Luke 2, verses 8 to 12, from the New International Version. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy to all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Black History Month continues with a recognition of Bishop Woody White. This article was written by Reverend Scott Manning. One of the pioneers and catalysts for the development of the Commission on Religion and Race was the Reverend Woody White. At the time, Reverend White was a Detroit Conference clergyman who had served East Grand Boulevard Methodist Church from 1963 until 1967, and then served as an urban missioner from the Detroit Conference. He worked in the metropolitan Detroit area for two years, seeking pathways for healing and reconciliation, for truth and justice following the race riots and struggle within the larger Detroit area. Upon the establishment of the General Commission on Religion and Race at the 1968 General Conference, Woody White would become the first General Secretary of the Commission. He held that position until he was elected to the Episcopacy in 1984 by the North Central Jurisdictional Conference. Bishop White would also be called upon to address racism and the pathways to justice and reconciliation in Australia and New Zealand through the work of the World Conference on Churches. Our United Methodist heritage has included struggles and opportunities, injustice and reconciliation, hopelessness and hopefulness. One of the lasting legacies of the Black Central Conference visionaries has been to hold the church accountable for its actions and its vision, and likewise to remind it of its opportunities in ways that the fullness of the kingdom of Christ can be realized. Today, we recognize Bush Bishop Woody White from the Michigan Conference as our Black History recipient. Let the church say, Amen. 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 And now for the kids' moment. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a pastor's moment, right? <laughs> testing, testing. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got some kids coming up. Come on up, guys. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Yeah. How you doing, guys? Now, I, I've, had, I've invited you guys up um, a numerous amount of times, me and Lindsay have. If you are young at heart, you will come up, right? Now, I gave out, what, a couple, uh, last week some, you know, little candy hearts, and uh, we've been giving out some stuff. Do I have to give gas cards out for y'all to come. Uh, but we, we do have a good time during Children's Moment, don't we? Just give them a, a round of applause as they come. Yeah. All right, all right. So the question of the day is, do we know 
who our creator of the world is. Who created the world? Pastor John? No. Who created the whole world? God. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. So if God created the world, then we must put our trust in God, right? Because God knows everything if God created the world, right? Yeah, yeah. So how do we trust in God? How do we trust in God? And there's going to be some fun going on back there in the kids' room. And I want to go back there, but, you know, I know I have to stay out here. But I want to go back there. But we're, you guys are going to have some really good fun back there. I don't want to tell uh, what's going on, but you know what's going on, right? So how do we trust uh, in God? Do we trust in God? How do we do that? How do you trust in God? Anybody? Anybody out here? How do you trust in God? No fear? Somebody else? Faith? We have faith, right? We have faith. If we have faith to get in our car and drive down the street, right, and that car won't swerve this way or that way, then we should have faith in God, right? Right? So when you go back there today, have faith. That if you give Pastor Combs one cookie, he'll be he'll be just he'll be happy, okay. But trust in God with all your heart and all your soul, and God will give you all the desires of your heart. So we have to trust in God, right? Amen, amen. All right, all right, you guys, let's go. Give him a hand. I'm going with you. See you guys. Let us stand uh, and sing our songs of grace. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his own.
rich and Jesus is king. I think you guys can do better now. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap this morning. For God is good all the time. Amen, amen. Before we go into prayer, I want to make a couple of announcements. Um, today, per the Book of Disciplines, we are announcing the need for a church conference. This special church conference is to bring the congregation up to speed on some information about our finances and future plans to right size our budget. So March the 3rd is the targeted date um, right after communion um, that we will have a moment of, uh, of conferencing. Uh, if the date changes, we'll let you know next, next Sunday. But for now, uh, March 3rd uh, is the date. We will soon uh, schedule our celebration for those in new membership class. Amen. Five new members, uh, three family transfers, and one in confirmation. I think we need to celebrate that. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I did get a chance to go out to visit uh, Brian uh, Wheatley. And uh, we had a good time together, and we spent some, uh, some, some quality time together. And he's, he watches every Sunday. So, Brian, if you're out there, we're waving to you. Everybody just wave. You can see the back of your hands, but everybody wave. Yeah, we love you, man, and keep, keep the faith. Uh, March um, the 10th is Women's, well, March is Women's History Month, but March the 10th we will have a, uh, a speaker, Reverend Fatima Blakely, will be preaching on March the 17th. Marty will be returning to bring um, the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And before I, I totally forget, uh, I know that Michigan State beat Michigan. <clears throat> so, Russ, I didn't forget. I know I was supposed to wear it. But it's a 2X and, you know, I kind of wear a 3X. But I just want to just let you know that it's on, okay? There you go. There you go. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen. Whew. I'll leave that, you know, right out there. 
I also um, want to uh, lift up all of those who are struggling with their health today. Amen? Uh, those who are in the hospital, those who are among us who are struggling, um, if we can say their names, if you know someone who is going through uh, treatments, um, dialysis treatments, cancer treatments, things of that nature, somebody who's homebound, somebody who is struggling with their health uh, in a Pentecostal moment, uh, let's just lift their names up. Yeah. Yeah. Patty Malloy, yeah. Yes. Patty sent me a, a picture um, we took together. Uh, I was going to put it on the screen. I'll put it on the screen next, uh, ne next week. Uh, she was happy that you are still praying for her. Amen. And so if you uh, are so inclined to be a part of the visitation team, I know me and Ricardo, we're on that team. Uh, we're getting a team together so that we can go and visit folks <clears throat> systematically um, so that we will n not leave anyone out of our congregation, even though they're homebound. Sounds good? Amen. Amen. Let's just lift up in prayer and move into the Lord's prayer. But let's lift up our world in prayer, um, things that are going on uh, in our nation in prayer. I think uh, my daughter called me from Colorado, and um, our grandkids were uh, going to elementary school, and there was a, sh a shooter alert, uh, active shooter alert, like a half a mile from the school. So, <clears throat> excuse me, they evacuated the, the school. I think there was um, one person that was deceased in that, in that shooting. So we still have a problem. Over, over 44 mass shootings, over 44 mass shootings since uh, January 1st uh, in our nation. And so we want to lift, uh, lift up that incident also. Also, on March the 2nd, I will be out at the local 228 uh, to help with um, the water board. Um, there's some paying your water, water bill issues. And uh, we have uh, faith base and union have come together to put some legislation uh, 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 in front of us so that we can, um, those folks that are low income can afford water. You should not have to decide whether you uh, have medicine or water to even take your medicine. That's just crazy. So um, there's some good legislation out there. So Local 228, um, on March the 2nd, I will be out uh, to support those efforts also. Um, is there anything else we need to pray for? Let's just be in a moment of prayer then. And uh, we want to pray for our tithes and our offerings uh, also as Sonny will lift up the basket. Lord, uh, we come to you this day, oh God, um, in this time uh, of Lent, this time of preparation, this time to find out who we are in creation and what is our purpose and lord we have lifted up the names of those who are homebound those who are sick those who are going through treatment lord we ask for your healing touch upon them touch us too lord as we make some hard decisions about our financing right right sizing the budget give us a mindset to continue to pay our tithes and offerings and and, uh, and lift up this mighty church. We pray for our, our children's uh, ministry, Lord, as you, as you can hear our, our children in the background, Lord, um, because if we don't hear that, we will not grow if we don't hear those voices. And so, Lord, we just want to lift up our children. We want to lift up our congregation, lift up those in the world, oh God, who are struggling through this violence mass shootings, Lord. We want to we want to pray for peace uh, in, in our world. Peace in Israel. Peace in Ukraine. Peace in the states. Lord, we just want to lift up peace today. You taught us this prayer, Lord, and, 
and we say this prayer, but we want to say it today and mean it in our hearts. And not just say it, but be a part of this prayer in our social justice, in our, in our everyday living. So let's say this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power. Amen. Well, good morning again, church. God is doing a new thing in and among us, and I don't want to miss it, and I don't, definitely don't want to sleep through it. I want to be relevant in whatever it is God is doing among us. I want us to know that God has a plan for his church, and that plan includes all of us. We are blessed to be able to, to worship today in the house of the Lord, but more than that, we are called to do more. We are called to be more. We are called to have more, to allow more, to be a part, to let that be a part of our vocabulary, to trust God more, to have more faith together, to create more ways uh, to be relevant new ways to reach people, telling them about the love of Jesus Christ by showing them the love that is in us and through us. If we are here today, God is giving us this day to get it right, folks. So let's give the Lord a hand clap today. I was pleased to go to the leadership development um, and church growth training hosted by Hope United Methodist Church uh, yesterday where the Reverend uh, Dr. Michael Bowie from Texas presented a powerful, earth-shaking challenge to the United Methodist Church to do or to have a new way of thinking. The book he presented was Dare to Shift. The title was Dare to Shift. It was a book calling for the leaders of the local church to change the way we have been doing ministry by being comfortable in our uncomfortability when it comes to change. Here is the disclaimer, folks. Under normal circumstances, a pastor is supposed to come into his new appointment and not do much, but observe. <laughs> and, you know, and to be, you know, kind of a, a normal. But our churches are losing members, amen? Our budgets are strained. And many in our denomination have left. Other churches are struggling with, with uh, being the church uh, 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 on the outside or, or, or building walls so that they don't have to deal with problems and issues of, of a, connectional, a connectional church. And so we have work to do, Down River. Amen? We have work to do. But first, let's get fired up by a joke. A little girl asked her mother, how did the human race appear? And the, uh, the mother answered, well, God made Adam and Eve, and they had some children. And so was all mankind made, she said. Two days later, the girl asked her father the same question. I know, you guys know this. And the father answered, well, many years ago, daughter, there were these little monkeys from which the human race evolved. The confused little girl said to her mother, Mom, how is it possible that you told me that the human race was created by God? 
And dad said, they developed from monkeys. And the mother said, well, dear, it's very simple. I told you about my side of the family and your dad's. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> okay, sinner. I was going to my granddaughter's birthday party yesterday, and I put my iPad on the top of the roof of the car. And then I was packing some presents in, and I was on the phone talking to a friend of mine about Ford Motor Company stuff, which I shouldn't have never been talking to him about. I was driving down Merriman, and I looked in the rearview mirror, and I see my iPad tumbling down the road. And so I turned, I made a U-E, and I turned back, and I parked right in the middle of Merriman, and I got out to rescue my iPad, which you do not see today. It was broken beyond repair. While my car was parked in the wrong direction, and I'm out, the car running, and I'm looking at my iPad, I noticed that down the street there was an accident. It was a really bad accident. A lady had ran a light and hit another lady, and her car was inverted on the side. And so I saw that. And I threw my iPad in the, in the car, I raced toward the accident. And when I got there, there were maybe five or six guys trying to tip the car back over on its wheels. And I said, no, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. The fire department is coming. They know what to do. The rescue folks are coming. They, want, they know what to do. It's not life-threatening if the, if the persons in the car are okay. And we checked on them, and they were, they were fine. We had them, you know, we had them joking a little bit about how come their cars tipped over. And they responded very well, so they were good. And the fire department came with the tools to get them out and rescue them. You, you know, you never know where God will have you at the time and how and why? If I didn't put my iPad on the top of the car and it didn't tumble off the back of the car, I may not have ever been, had a, had a chance to go and help someone in uh, life's devastating moment. So we act when God calls you. Don't pass up that opportunity. There's a song that I know Sherry sings, and she sings it very well. We're going to sing, sing it too. It's called Kings of Kings. And I thought I would preach on that because we seldom realize what God did for us, giving us this gift of life. I mean, we go through day by day. We wake up as if life was owed to us. We breathe in the air as if we're supposed to, and we're entitled to it. And we don't realize that life is a gift. It's a gift that God has given us every single day. God's creation in, this, in these lyrics moved my heart. And I thought for once that this crazy pastor would take those lyrics and put some scripture to them and maybe bless someone. The first verse, without me singing it, because Sherry sings it better than I do, says this. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope and without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a, from a throne of endless glory to the cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty. Praise forever. The King of kings.
the, the very journey that Christ made on our behalf is not only central to our purpose as Christians, it, it, it was an epic plan for us to return to the Father unscathed, unharmed, undamaged, but not unchanged. I believe in that journey that we can be blessed because when we recognize the sovereignty of God through the creation story, we can best serve Jesus as Jesus has served us. We can best take care of the church and take care of everyone in the church. We can best be the people that God had created us to be. I thought about <clears throat> that brief trip through our biblical history and a lyrical narration of Kings of Kings. I thought that it would help us to understand the importance of creation and redemption. We often hear or read and hear the biblical narrative through readings and scriptures and sometimes you know, dance and plays, hearing sermons and singing songs that touch us spiritually and emotionally because it helps us to connect with the Creator, doesn't it? Those songs that we just sung helps us. This is why songs like Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, oh, what a... Songs like Christ Alone, songs like Give Thanks, songs like 10,000 Reasons, There's None Like You, or How Great Is Our God, are so blessed for us and relevant to our journey as Christians. These particular songs tied with scriptures helps us to live out our journey of the gospel in hopes of blessing not just ourselves, but blessing others. Can I get an amen? So this is my rendition of the, of the creation story. Please don't laugh until I'm finished. God created the vastness of the universe. The stars, the moon, the darkness of the heavens called space. The planets that seemed to rotate on a string, God lifted them up and called it our universe. The planets were balanced just the way God wanted them to be. God created them for his pleasure, and I believe for our pleasure also. But then our God saw it fit to create the earth and all that is within it, the sea and all of its creatures, little and small, some discovered and some not yet discovered, the birds in the air and those creepy creatures that crawled in the earth, and God stopped the waters of the earth so it wouldn't overcome the land. The mountains and the valleys, the green pastures and the swamps, the wetlands, the dry deserts, all created by God. And God said, it was good. God created the days and the nights and numbered them seven. And all creation was created in five days, and it was all good. But then on the sixth day, God said these words, Let us create man in our own image. People of God, this was God's greatest creation. Let us create humankind in our own image. God created us and molded us out of the, out of the dirt of the earth. 
He formed us in his image, the image of Christ, the Son, and the image of God, the Father. God molded <clears throat> and then breathed his spirit of life into that created, molded, dirt image of themselves. And we lived. <clears throat> we breathed. We were created unlike the angels that God created. We spoke. We communicated. We have emotions, created thoughts. And you know what God said? This is very good, Genesis 2. We were created in the image of of Christ and God the Father. God also gave us free will. Somebody say, uh oh. <clears throat> the freedom to understand, the freedom to comprehend, the freedom to walk, the freedom to run, the freedom to choose to do or not to do, the freedom to accept or deny. In this freedom, we can love, we can sing, we can dance. We can worship, and we can deny ourselves to be filled by God's Spirit. God gave us this freedom, this free will to choose. God placed us in the garden with this free will, and we failed. We were not obedient. We were not obedient with our free will. We chose darkness. We chose death. We chose to be separated from God, the creator. Genesis 3. But even before chapter 3 was said and done, in verse 15, this sovereign God, this merciful God, this forgiving God, who loved us before the creation of of the world put into motion, this God, this supreme creator, put into motion a plan, a plan of redemption. God's plan was to buy us back from our choices of death and destruction. The plan in Genesis sounded like this. In Genesis 3 and 15, for those of you who have your Bibles, God said to the serpent who tricked his creation, I will put immunity between the woman and between your seed and her seed, capital S, because when you capitalize something like that in the Bible, you're talking about the creator or Christ, capital S, he, capital H, shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his, capital H, heel. Moments after the crime of sin was committed in the garden by humankind, God's plan for redemption was placed into existence. We have the freedom of choice. Some might say, uh-oh, again. In creation, in the creation story and throughout our history, Jesus talks about those who sat or are sitting in the darkness. And so this song spoke to me, without hope, without light, without hope, without light. This is right out of the book of Isaiah, when God is speaking with creation, creation who has defiled the promises of God from the beginning. God is referring to us, to creation, sitting in darkness. In Isaiah 9, God says that we walk, not only sit, but we walk in darkness. And in Matthew 4, Jesus talks about those who sit in darkness, the people that sat in darkness. This is an, an expression um, um, denoting great ignorance sitting in darkness, great ignorance. As in darkness or night, 
we can see nothing and know not where we go if we're sitting in darkness, if we're walking in darkness. So those who are ignorant of God are said to be in darkness. Commentary Benson says this about sitting in darkness in connection with the Matthew scripture. There are those who have lived in gross ignorance of God and religion. They are those who are still sitting in darkness. So in essence, biblically, we're not talking about someone who is sitting without lights or who are sitting uh, in a dark part uh, of the night. No, we're, 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 we're talking about those who, in which Satan has controlled over, over time and those who which do not know Christ and those who know Christ but has chosen not to follow Christ. They have chosen to follow other gods, small g, small g. Those who are sitting in darkness were or are spiritually dead, the spiritually unknowledgeable about the things of God. Our job as a church downriver is to show who Christ is in us. Because at one time or another, we were the ones sitting in darkness. Somebody say, have mercy. Church, today we have the good news. We have the good news. And that good news is God has a plan. Amen? God's plan is perfect. You know why God's plan is perfect? Because we didn't help God devise the plan. God had a meeting with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus Christ. We weren't invited to that meeting. Have mercy. Thank you, Lord, that we weren't. Because that plan was to redeem his people with the power of the blood that is shed on the cross. It is that plan that we should be focused on during this Lenten season. The time that you spend in the books with, 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 with Bill Curtis, the times that you spend with me in Bible studies are the time that we should be spending knowing that from dust we came and to dust we will. Till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt in the creation story God had mercy on us God loves us before the foundation of the world and in his love because of our failure to love God back that didn't stop God. In fact, God's decision to send his only begotten son to redeem us, to stand up for us, to teach us, to love us, to fight for us, to heal us and forgive us, that son was told to us by the prophet Isaiah that Jesus would come as a baby born of a virgin. And Micah, in the book of Micah, confirms the place, the place Bethlehem. And the son was sent to us with a plan. From the throne of grace, from a place of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. I'll leave you with Luke's words and I'll close because there's more to the song, so you have to come back next week. Luke records what happened in Bethlehem. Here are his words. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. Let us pray.
Gracious and loving God, you left heaven when we made a decision to leave you. You, you ran to us. You didn't walk. You didn't wait to devise a plan. At that very moment we sinned, you came running. In your eyes there was mercy. You forgave us. You loved us. You called your plan the redemption plan. You told it to your prophets. You wrote it in your laws. And then on that day in the city of David, you were born to solidify that plan. That plan. You left your throne of glory for us. In this Lenten season, Lord, we... We pray that we not only remember you, but we remember our baptism. For from dust we came, and to dust we will return. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand, let us sing our last song, and depart.
Down River Life. Life is short. I've seen that by the accident last week or the other day. Life is short and we don't have much time to mess around. The hearts of those who travel with us must be attended to. So be swift to love. Be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. And go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. May the peace be with you. Amen. Praise the Lord.